This is the leg part of the torch that I printed out. It took about 13 and a half hours to print. So this is probably the biggest print that I've printed out to date. So it's got lots of support there. And I'm not really sure um, how easy it is going to be to get all that support material out. But I'll have a go anyway. Weight wise, this one comes in at 145 grams. So this is how far I've got after, what's that, 40 minutes. So starting to haul out the inside and still a lot to remove there. So it's quite time consuming. Well, this is it after 90 minutes. Still some ways to go, making headways into the inside. So at this point, I think I begin to think, should I just design another body for the torch and give up on this one? It's just really hard and sore trying to get all the support material out. So I've been doing this for about an hour and 55 minutes, just come back to it. Um, it's one of these things where you think, do I give up or do I go on? But I think I'm starting to get there and this thing is just not going to beat me. So two hours, 40 minutes later, finally managed to get all of the support material removed. It's a little bit rough around the edges, so I might try sanding it. But devastated, it's cracked along there. Um, so I could always just glue that. Um, I think if I was designing this again, I'd probably design this in two parts. Uh, something that could be printed perhaps without some supports. It might be quite difficult to, to do, so I'd have to alter the design somewhat. So I'll try giving that a little bit of a sand down and see, see what it looks like. So a lot of rubbing with various grits of sandpaper later. I've got it down to a, a reasonably nice finish. Um, might try and spray some clear lacquer on it and see if it improves the improves the surface of it, but at least it's still intact. So that's gone down from about 146 grams, 145 grams to 85, so supports is that 60 grams. So this is the heat sink that the LED is going to sit on top of, and I've just marked the outline. And then I'm just going to mark where I want to drill the bolt holes for holding this in. So I'm just going to mark that with a punch. So the screws or bolts I've got for holding the LED in are three millimeter so I'm gonna drill with a two and a half millimeter drill bit through these. So that should fit. So now I'm just going to take a three millimeter tap and just tap some threads into this aluminium. And I'll just repeat that for the other hole. While I've got the taps out, I might as well tap the holes for the lens and reflector components. So this is just the same size, an M3 bolt that's going to go through this. So it just means I'll be able to put the bolts through to hold the lens assembly onto the onto the heatsink. One of the next things I printed out was a battery box. So battery box and a lid. And the lid would just slide in to a slot on the side here. And I've, I've had an issue trying to remove the support material from in there. So because it had a groove for the lid to run along, then it was all filled with support material. The slot, the back down here, inside here was filled with support material and I had to get all that out. But I just couldn't get the support material out of the back and it's actually split that a little bit. So... I think what I need to do is just get the Dremel out and try and grind some of that out and then just a little bit of super glue to fit that back in. One of the things that I found was quite helpful to get the support material out was a set of picks or hooks like that. So I was able to, with this one, put that underneath the support material and apply leverage to get that out. And same with like a, a straight one like that. Uh, I'll to put that in there and just try and like pull out the sport material and that was quite handy. 
So I'm going to try and see if I can get the last bit of plastic out the bottom there with a Dremel. Okay, I think that's sorted now. So what are the main components of the torch? This is a set that I bought from eBay. It's got the, the lens, the reflector and holder. The LED, that's a 10 watt cob with the heat sink and fan and a constant current source. So as with the previous video, uh, all the LEDs that you light will need to be driven with a, a constant current. So this driver here will allow that. And if I remember correctly, this driver takes anything from 12 to 24 volts and steps that down to between 9 to 12 volts. So enough to drive the LED at 12 volts. So to mount the lens component, I've printed out this enclosure. I didn't like the metal one that came with it. I thought it would be a bit harder to put together using this. So that just fits in nicely in the bottom there. And we have the lens, like so. And then another part that fits onto that. So we've got the reflector, and that fits in nicely there. And these two parts can then be screwed together and some space for the wires. Then the heat sink with the LED. So that just be screwed on top like that, and that'll fit inside. And then we'll have the the stand for the, the torch and then the battery box. So I just cut down some bolts to size to fit the LED into the enclosure and just see how much they're sticking up. So I can maybe file that one down just a little bit. One good idea when you're cutting down some bolts like that is to put a hex nut just down from where you went, want to cut and then cut that off. And then what you can do is twist the nut off and that will help re-thread the, the very end so that it makes it easier to go into your final hole. So it wasn't taken solder too well so I've put it into a mount and just cleaned the end of it with some flux. And I'll just tin the ends of these wires for the driver. So now that I've pinned both wires I'm just going to tack the negative lead onto the negative end of the LED. Next thing you need to do is wire up two wires to the switch. So I'm just going to add some heat shrink tubing to this. So the wiring for this is fairly simple. We've got the LED that goes into the driver. We're going to have a switch here. Gonna have the fan coming off like so. So I'm just gonna solder these up. So the other side of this driver has a bridge rectifier here, so that's why these are both the same colour, so it doesn't really matter uh, whether it's plus or minus here. So I'll just designate one of these as being plus and minus for the fan. So here I'm just gonna start to wire up the switch. I'll just tighten that with a pair of pliers. So the next thing I did was I resoldered one of the wires there and put a longer one on the switch and it's just come out that hole in the bottom. Next thing I'm going to do is take the negative lead for the battery pack and connect that onto the fan and to one of the contacts of the driver. So next I'm going to take the lead from the driver, the positive lead from the fan and connect that to the positive lead of the battery. I'm just going to remember and put some heat shrink up onto there first. And 
and I'll just put the heat shrink over that. Then the negative lead of the battery just goes through that hole in the bottom too. It's easy trying to push a flexible piece of wire through. It's a bit harder than I thought, but that's both battery wires now through the base. And I don't want to power it too long without any heat sink on the on the LED. So that's all good. And then try and retouch the fan. Screws are so small and fiddly. Next I'm just going to wipe the heat sink and the LED with some isopropyl alcohol just to clean off any gunk so that the thermal paste will make good contact. So I'm just going to put a little blob in the middle there. I think it's maybe a bit too much. I'll just give that a little wipe. One thing I forgot to do was to leave space for the wires on the underside of the heatsink to pass through the circular hole here. That circular hole is just the same size as the, the fan that's underneath. So I'm just going to cut out a notch there to allow the wires to go through. That should do it. I'm also going to try and make a little bit more space for the screw heads on the LED. Next I'm just going to tap some holes, M3 holes for these M3 bolts through these two parts here. Then I'll just repeat that for all the holes. So next comes the assembly, so I'll just make sure that the driver's tucked down nicely inside there. And the wires are going down that cutout. The reflectors in there, I better give that a bit of a clean. Give the lens a clean as well. Okay, so I'll just get the cutouts in the base of here and get the wires into the right bit. Just make sure that makes a good and then try and see if these bolts I've got are they look just about the right length to be driven all the way through there into there. They might be just ever so slightly too long, so I'll give it a try and see. So oh, looks like that might just be fitting. I'll try some more screws and see how that goes. I don't want to strip out the thread so I'll just switch over to manual screwdriver for this bit. So I'll just give it a little test just to make sure that everything's working okay and that the fan is free to turn. So that's cool, I can hear the fan turning in there. So that's all good. Next need to install the batteries in the battery box. So these wires need to go through this middle hole. That way around. So these holes just to install some bolts. Join these two parts together. Now how I'm gonna get the bolts onto there I'm not sure yet. Okay, change attack. I think the screws have to go in from from the top. So if I get the washer in place, let's kill this one. So it's quite easy to move the washer into place. Well, famous last words. Okay, now I just have to tighten these up. Okay, so since I put the bolts in from the top, I needed them to be a bit longer so that I could get them through the hole 
but now they'll be too long for the battery box underneath so I'm going to see if I can just cut these off with the Dremel. So now I'm going to connect up the battery box. So I'll just put a bit of heat shrink tubing on first. So here I'm just letting the wire heat up and then just letting the solder flow in to the wires. So next thing, put some batteries in. Okay, so at least you know that's working. So we have one torch. This is a 10 watt LED, so with the fan on it as well, I'm not sure how long those batteries are actually going to last. So that being 8 times 1.5 volts, that's 12 volts. What I could have put in there was four 18650 lithium ion batteries, and then that would give me the ability to be able to recharge that. But that would have made the project a little bit more complicated. So I can always switch it over later on once I figure out how to how to charge and make sure I don't over discharge the lithium ion batteries. So hopefully with the fan in there it won't overheat the heatsink. If it does then the, the PLA plastic here will begin to melt or deform. Okay so if I turn down the exposure level you can see the nine chips inside the LED. So I'd say this is probably the brightest torch I currently own. And that's on spot mode. And now if I switch over to my new 10 watt Torch. Then you can see the difference. So, tiny little spot. Compared to my 10 watt torch. So I guess to sum this one up, this was a fun project to do. The 10 watt eBay LED well outperformed the 5 watt Aldi torch, which is probably my brightest torch that I have. It was fun creating this in Fusion 360, if not a bit frustrating at times. Things I've learned, I guess. In some cases, it's really difficult to get the support material out from some projects, so probably watch when you're designing with that in mind. From an electronics point of view, if you're building something like this, just remember that LEDs need a constant current power source, which is why I had the LED driver in there. The fan wasn't driven from the LED driver, it was straight from the, from the batteries. If I was printing this again, I think I would do this part in two halves and this part in two halves and just glue them together. But in doing that, you're not gonna get quite the same style of lines is on that one. I didn't want to cover up the heat sink in this one. I actually quite like seeing the, the metal in along with the plastic. With 3D printing, it's quite good doing a modular design like this because you can swap out the different components. When you make mistakes, you don't have to print everything out again. Also really impressed with the tolerances you get with 3D printing. The ability to be able to put this lens in there and that was first time. That's really good. So it's fairly snug, doesn't move very much in there. Here's wishing you all a great 2018 cheerio.